Good morning, everyone. Teacher Thomas here in Nakuna Yoke. Look at the sunrise. It's a little decent sunrise this morning. Taking little dogs for a walk. Good boy, Jake. Good boy. We just love our little uh, village here. See what day is it? It's Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday. About 6 a.m. Our sunrises and sunsets here in Thailand really never change. About 6 to 6, a little bit of variance, say 6.30 or, you know, shortly thereafter or before, but not much change like we get in the northern hemispheres, you know, where we get really long summer days and short summer or short winter days. So Thailand is pretty much 12 hours of each. Doesn't change much. The position of the sun in the sky changes, of course, but not really the time of the sunrise and uh, sunsets are pretty much pretty much 12 hours of each daylight and night so you don't really get the long long days but you really don't want them because it's hot long days kind of like having the long nights too but then again we're used to in summer it not getting dark till 9 or 10 o'clock so you feel like you can get a lot done with those daylight hours here you're never going to have that that really long daylight hours so you know by 6 6 30 you better have what you need done unless you have lights because <laughs> it's going to get dark on you slow down huh what are you doing calm down good boy Blackie always walks a really nice pace, but Jake's so long-legged and strong, he likes to pull you everywhere if he can get by with it. Teach him to uh, slow his pace down so it's a more enjoyable walk <laughs> instead of being drug around the whole time. What is it? What is it? You smell somebody's butt was there? Oh no, it's a butt smell. Huh? Don't need to pee on it? Okay. But anyway, everyone, good morning, and uh, I hope you are having a beautiful day. And for those back home in America, I hope you're having a beautiful Tuesday evening. Exactly 12 hours apart now that they went back to daylight savings time, sprung forward in the Midwest, where I'm from. We are exactly 12 hours apart, so their p.m. is my a.m. and vice versa. Pretty easy to keep track of what time it is back home. So, anyway, yesterday I did a little video of the application process for one-year extension for a foreigner who is married to a Thai. And I tried to make it understandable for everyone, and also if you're doing the same thing, one year extension for your retirement this year, 2019. Basically the same process. You just don't have to show anything about the wife, but you still have the forms, the, the F of the acronym, the, the Y, switch, switch that. The Y, which is all about you, and uh, no W if you're retired visa, so you don't have to worry about proving wife or marriage. We still have to do the master of the house, right? So. So I hope that helped, but I uh, did get some comments from some subscribers about, you know, there's uh, slight differences in each district. Uh, immigration office may require, you know, things that my immigration office didn't require because, again, I had all of that stuff approved on Monday. So, uh, yeah, there is that. For anybody that's doing this for the first time or say you've just moved to another district, Oh, mean dog. Jake! No. <laughs> so anybody that's moved to another district and you, and you show up and you have everything you did 
that's your old district and the new district says oh no 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 you gotta have xyz right jake calm down hmm. so anyway this lot that was burned out interruption in the conversation they just came in and put a bunch of fill dirt in this lot that was all grassed up and burnt out so now it's kind of kind of an easy walk Jake, I'm not going with you. You're going with me. Huh? They get to smelling so many different soy dogs. They go nuts about all these different smells. But anyway, so I agree with the subscriber. I mean, there can be those uh, different uh, slight uh, requirements from each district. You know, one, the immigration officers basically have discretion to investigate. Now, they cannot require you to provide something that's not part of Thai immigration law. And, of course, we just had our election here, and the current Prime Minister Prayut appears by all measure that has been officially elected now. So, Prayut established a corruption hotline for uh, many of the expats and foreigners. Uh, I don't know if you are all aware of it, but... The military uh, has, you know, known for a long time about uh, corruption within the police department. Now, the immigration that you're dealing with is the police department, the Royal Thai Police, right? It's immigration police, but it's still the police branch, right? So, the military doesn't like that corruption. They don't like immigration officers trying to get tips and make up stories about something you need in your application when it's not something that's required. So, you know, I say stand your ground. Don't ever be rude to an immigration officer, but stand your ground, you know. If you have every document that I had yesterday in that pile, you're good to go. Now, what didn't I have? We did talk about the new bank book, okay? And yes, clarification, you need to update your bank book register the day you turn in your application. So deposit a hundred baht, anything, you know, if you have extra money in there, take out a little bit of money, but that's gonna update the register. It's gonna have that date. So your bank book's gonna have all the transactions you've ever made since you put that 400,000 in there, right? Which most of us would have done in January as soon as we knew that's, that's the new deal, right? Uh, in addition, the subscriber talked about they may require an actual formal letter from your bank instead of just a bank statement. It's kind of strange the way the banking works here in Thailand. You know, you don't get a bank statement in the mail every month. Of course, a lot of people do online banking now. But you can go in there and print out your history, right? Uh, here, like if you want to official bank statement record history of your account and everything certified from the bank you have to pay them like a couple hundred bucks you know you go in there and talk to your bank and you pay them six bucks or whatever and they print out the history of your bank account but it's not something that you you automatically have you know so anyway i think it's a great idea to not only update the bank register book the day of the application showing the current balance in the in the most recent transaction which would have been the day you turn it in okay so hey hey what are you doing you're gonna get us all tangled up in that all right anyway uh <laughs> get distracted walking these kids try to learn something every day with them but you know they're still still got that wild dog especially jake being only two years old he he wants to smell everything okay let's go back this way lucky done did her business jake's about getting ready to right here there you go jake good spot good spot yeah let's get her done good boy there he goes so anyway sorry about the shakiness i just i got my little selfie stick here but I don't have a gimbal or anything to try to stabilize anything but I hope that that kind of clarifies okay that's the main thing that's in the why the you part 
what you need to provide about you and the new one is your bank so yeah update your register the day you turn in your application go ahead and get a uh, a bank statement from the bank that day you know which will show that day's date and it'll show the official history of the account that it never dropped under the required amount and then just for insurance why not go ahead and get a letter from the bank and the, the letter from the bank can also state where the funds originated from which is important if you're doing a monthly income verification right if you don't have the required 400,000 bot married, 800,000 bot retired. If you don't have that, let's go down here. Come on. And you're doing the monthly income verification. You're showing deposits coming into your account every month, 40,000 bot at least minimum. If you're married, uh, 65,000 bot a month if you're retired, okay? So depending on when your visa expires, you're only gonna have those deposits coming in since January, unless you had a tight bank account previous to that and had your, your money coming in. But especially those people that are doing the income verification and not a total amount, uh, yeah, you need a letter from the bank that says specifically all those deposits, each individual deposit that you are claiming as your income came from an overseas source specifically your home country right so that verifies that you have that income from home and you're having it wire transferred into your bank account right so that is very important so just to clarify the big new thing in the u file is the bank right show me the money so if you're doing the 400,000 for married or 800,000 for retired you don't have to be concerned about a letter stating every month he has this much coming from his home country because you already meet the the total amount requirement you just need to verify that money's been there have a current register and a current statement right but definitely uh, you know always do anything extra you need if you get to immigration office and they're like oh well we don't really need that paper okay cool but you had it <laughs> right so i agree with the subscriber update your bank book the day of get a official bank statement for six bucks that shows the history of the account and that's going to be dated the day of and get a letter from the bank stating you know this money's been there it's an overseas uh transaction whatever so you basically have three confirmations that you either meet the total uh balance requirement or you meet the every month income requirement so i hope that clarifies that part in the U. That was the only thing in the U. Everything else, you know, passports, ID, insurance. I mean, provide everything you have, because again, they are updating all the computer systems, right? Everything is going to be modernized on the immigration with the new Lieutenant General Kun Jok, the chief of the immigration police now, right? Now, Kun Jok has a long history he didn't get to be a lieutenant general by sitting on his heels, right? He's a highly respected man, and he worked with the uh, Thailand Tourism Police for a long time in Pattaya. So he has a lot of experience with foreigners of every kind, you know, holiday and expats, right? So man knows what he's doing. Okay, let's eat. Huh? Let's eat. Sit. Why do you do this? Sit down. Sit. Sit. I don't know why they get all tangled up. They're good now. Good boy. Good girl. Blackie. Sit. Good doggies. Ooh, Blackie's having a hard time. Sweetie, why did you drop it, huh? You don't want to get all that dirt on your food. Good girl. I just love Thailand, you know? Not that you can't do the same thing in America with your dogs, go walking, but. There's just a, a lot more laid back atmosphere to Thailand in so many ways. And so when you're doing an everyday thing like this, 
just you just realize where you are you know and you're thankful that you're here because it's a great country if I didn't want to be here I wouldn't be here I have no uh, reason to not go back to America if I wanted to other than I hate cold weather but that's not that's not it right it's not just that I want to live in a tropical country it's that I love this country so anyway you know remember uh, remember that get get everything in the U file everything you possibly can related to your bank right even if it's a updated register uh, an official statement and a letter right just cover all that because you never know was there anything else yeah there was a subscriber that mentioned in the W file of my wife I had her Thai ID which shows Henry South my surname she's taken and that's the official ID name change on the ID. She has my surname. But in addition to that, we have to provide a copy of the official uh, document when we legally changed her name. Okay, so that confirms that her ID is correct. So uh, one subscriber said that he didn't do that with his wife because there's a provision in Thai law that once a Thai takes on a foreigner's name, they're prohibited from buying land or real estate so I'm gonna be the first person to say I don't know everything by a long shot I have some experience and and uh, kind of know what I'm doing on the application for renewal but there are a lot of things that I don't know and I'm always the first one to say if I'm wrong I'll tell you I'm wrong because I am NOT a proud man right I'm the opposite I'm a very humble guy and uh, so even though I try to make a video that I think will be helpful to people just based on my experience I wish I would have had all the knowledge I have now when I filed for my first year right Jake no I don't know why you don't like that dog so much Jake no does not like that little dog there normally the older dog is hey no is not outside normally the older dog stays inside but it's a very old dog and she really gets all panted and excited every time we walk by the other one Jake just ignores but anyway uh, so that's that's my perspective there's always something for all of us to learn right so if you have something man share it comment do whatever you know I appreciate it because uh, wisest man I ever met was 110 years old and he told me the day you quit learning is the day they put you under the ground or burn you to ashes one or two right would you guys stop doing all this tangling me up stuff <laughs> anyway so you know you should learn something every day basically what the old man was saying right you learn until the day you die if you don't you know maybe you're too arrogant and too too much pride you think you know everything and I don't want anyone to think that I when I make a video trying to help people and, and sharing my experience oh if I'm wrong call me out or something I missed in that application a form that you know about that I don't call me out man put it in there right but I do appreciate the comments about about you know let's let's make sure we get additional requirements from the bank on that whether you're doing the income or the lump sum amount you know get, get everything you can from the bank and have it updated the day you turn in your application and then the other thing I didn't have but I knew I didn't have again I was just going early to get everything reviewed I, I wasn't trying to get my application submitted formally you know and get my stamp saying that I'm under consideration for a for a one-year extension you know, I wasn't trying to do that I just wanted to with the new changes and everything I wanted to bring two copies all piled together in a nice neat organized form with a beautiful map drawing of where my house is and you know go in there with a high level of respect for the immigration officer and because this is a new office here in my city and uh, so I'm making an introduction I'm making an introduction of myself and how you present yourself you know when you go in there I suggest you know no flip-flops and tank tops and all that crap I mean shorts and a t-shirt's fine you know it's not like you need to wear a dress shirt and a tie or something but you know, go in there with at least a certain level of respect for the process and I think you'll come out better don't ever be argumentative with a tie especially official Thai immigration police I mean why would you want to be argumentative if you know they're wrong about something then 
Uh, it's going to get lost in translation because most of them can't speak English. So you got your wife or someone there trying to explain what you're saying. Just get up and walk away from it. I mean, if they're insisting that your application is not complete and you think they're wrong, get up and walk away from it. You know, go to another seating area and have a little dance here. <laughs> Okay, okay, you had your fun. Yeah, wasn't that fun? They, they, they don't, they, they don't want to mess with you. No, they don't want to mess with you, huh? Nope. Anyway, it's already hot this morning. I'm sweating on this morning walk. I mean, it's muggy. We are in so desperate need of that rainy season to start. It's the hottest time of the year for sure, because you have high level of humidity, but the rain hasn't broke out. Jake. There you go again, twisting me all up. The rain hasn't broke out to cool off any of the air, right? So anyway, I hope that's a little bit of clarification on the application process. Uh, the wife thing about the name change. I'm gonna have to look into that, you know, because she does own real estate. Now her Tombi and Bond, her house register book, doesn't change. That still has her full Thai name. You don't go change a house book, right? A house book is issued and that's your house book. So uh, her ID officially has my surname, but her Tombi and Bon still has her maiden name. So I think the Tombi and Bon is what you would use when you make a house purchase. So I'm going to have to check into that, but I appreciate that heads up on that. I'll look into that. But I hope that clarifies because, I mean, everything else was uh, approved as complete you know uh, uh, let's say one of our photos was a little blurry from the kitchen and we didn't have a photo actually sitting at the dining table so you know make sure you get outside the entire house outside with the house number clearly visible and uh, and then after that you need each room living room dining room kitchen bedroom okay you don't need the laundry room or the bathroom, thank God. But so you're gonna have all of those photos and make sure there's not any blur. Cause I mean, the one in the kitchen, you could see that it was us. I mean, there was just a little blurriness to it. Not, not good enough. So now again, this is your application. You're gonna turn that in. They accept it as complete. Then they're gonna schedule a time for the immigration officers to come to your house. They're gonna take more photos of you and your wife at the house. So kind of like you, you double prove everything, right? Remember, we're all guests here. We're all guests. So there's a 99% certainty that you, if you do everything right, you're going to get that additional one year. I mean, they're not going to throw you out of the country. But when you're going through the application process, it kind of seems like, you know, there's no guarantee here. i got to get all this stuff turned in. i got to have it on time. It's all got to be right. It's all got to be certified, you know. But once you get through the application, you get it submitted, that very first step. Then after that... Uh, they're going to send it to Chiang Watana, the headquarters. As soon as they get the approval from the headquarters that everything is good, uh, they're going to call you back. Of course, in the meantime, when they send that off to Chiang Watana, the immigration officer is going to come to your house and take pictures and do an interview or whatever. And uh, I forgot to mention, now, uh, when we went to turn in that application, we didn't take a witness with us because we weren't officially submitting it. We were just getting it reviewed. When you turn in your application that we did, TM7 and all the crap that goes with it, right? When you turn that in, you know you got everything right, your bank up to date, you got everything you need. You have to take a witness with you, okay? Before they're gonna approve your application. And your witness must live in the same province. You can't take a, say, you know, so many of these provinces, like county lines, you could have a friend just over the other side. You can't take that witness with you. Now, before you could, just any Thai person could witness, yes, I know them, I know where they live, I've been to their house, blah, blah, blah. Now it's like, your witness has to be from the same province. So remember, the day of your application, you have to have that witness with you in addition to your forms. So I hope that clarifies. I think that's the end of the process. What's wrong with you? Anyway. Um, 
But my main reason for doing that uh, application step-by-step -step process is because it was very difficult for me, especially that first year, even the second year, and then I moved to another district. So, you know, it was like doing everything. It's like, it doesn't matter if you've done it four or five, six times. You move to another district, they treat you like it's year one, like you're the stranger and they have to investigate everything about you, right? So if you're doing it continuously in the same district, usually it gets much easier, you know. You understand what they need, they know you, you know. Pretty much same uh, slam dunk kind of thing, but uh, you never know. So one thing you don't want to do is get there with your witness and think you're all ready and they're like, oh, you forgot this document, you know, or you don't have this certified. And so now you brought a witness with you, you wasted their time because you didn't have your forms complete. And now you got to go get something stamped and uh, come back the next day. And what if you're down on a timeline where your visa is about to expire? So that's why I say I recommend going in early, get your stuff reviewed, especially with these new changes on the bank books and all that. I mean, just make sure you have everything they want when you bring your witness, you know, you're not wasting their time. You know, it's, it's going to be a pretty quick process. I mean, if you have everything and they go through and they've already seen it before and they've reviewed it and now you make sure the photos are good because they told you before, hey, you need to, you know, get this photo, whatever. Everything they told you, you made a note of, now you've come back, you've got everything updated. Boom. You know, it's, it's a quick deal and your witness has to fill out a paper. And again, that's all the forms, papers that you provide, you know, your forms, you, your wife, and your house. But they're going to add a bunch more stuff that's filled out by the immigration officer, a paper that's filled out by the witness. I mean, uh, when they come to take pictures of you and interview, they're going to have more forms. Uh, sometimes they want a witness, like a neighbor, when they come to your house. They want another witness to kind of like attest to, yeah, they've been living here for two years, whatever, right? So, uh and again, turning in application is the first step of the process. So you remember that acronym, acronym F Y W H, right? If I'd have known that my first couple of years, I think it would have made it a lot less stressful on me. Yeah. So that's that's the main reason that I did the step by step and created the acronym. So you have four parts that you're creating instead of just one big. Oh, I've got to do all this difficult paperwork and submit this to get my extension I got to do this every year I don't remember what I had to do last year and this year they got more changes okay so if you break it down into four parts even if there's a change you know which section did that affect is there a new form you have to fill out is there some new document next year are they gonna require us to provide health insurance you know that's why I put that in there in my you because I think we all know it's common so I hope that that you know four part acronym helps everybody so that pretty much wraps that up if there's any other comments or questions please comment ask me tell me i don't know everything if you have something that i've left out let's help everyone make a smoother one-year extension okay peace love remember stay happy